Some 1,500 black and Latino applicants to the Fire Department of New York have settled a long-running lawsuit with the city and the Justice Department over racially discriminatory hiring practices at the nation's largest fire department. The agreement grants almost $100 million in back pay to those impacted. When the case was filed in 2007, the fire department was 90 percent white, even though African Americans and Latinos totaled half the city's population. Under the new agreement, the fire department will be required to change its recruiting policies in order to increase diversity and make the department more representative of the city's population. This is the latest discrimination lawsuit settled by New York since Mayor Bill de Blasio took office 10 weeks ago. The city also settled a case over its police department's controversial stop and frisk program, and another case that sought to block a law allowing individual officers to be sued for racial profiling. Well, for more, we're joined by two guests. Paul Washington is past president of the Black Firefighters Group, the Vulcan Society of Black Firefighters, and captain of Engine 234 in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. He was one of the Fire Department of New York employees who raised the original Equal Employment Opportunity Commission complaint about the department's racial makeup. And Richard Levy is with us, lead attorney representing the Black Firefighters, senior partner of the law firm Levy Ratner, and worked on the case with the Center for Con constitutional rights. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Paul Washington, let's begin with you. What is the significance of this latest development in the settlement? Well, first, uh, thanks for having me on. And um, the significance is uh, this is one more victory um, in a long fight that we've had with the city over uh, um, uh, excluding blacks uh, and other people of color from the fire department. Um, it's been a long battle. It's been a 150-year battle. The fire department is actually 150 years old in New York City, and they've never hired uh, blacks, women, or people of color in any type of substantial numbers. So this is another victory. Give us the numbers again on the percentage of people of color in the fire, in this fire department. That's the largest in the country, second largest in the world. Right. Uh, right now, blacks are about 4 percent of the fire department. Hispanics, maybe about 8 or 9 percent. And um, actually, those are the highest numbers we've ever had in the fire department, percentage-wise. Um, it's never been below uh, 90 percent white male. So now it's about 86, 86, 87 percent uh, white male. And that's where it stands. And uh, Richard Levy, you've been working on this case. Can you explain how the New York City Fire Department compares to other fire departments across the U.S. and why it's been so uh, disproportionately white? Well, it's, it's the worst in the country. There is no fire department in any substantial city that has had a worse uh, record on diversity than the New York City Fire Department. Uh, and it's, it's been uh, chastised for that for decades, including by federal courts. But for some reason, the administrations have not chosen uh, until now to take steps to remedy an obvious problem. But why in New York City? Why, why has New York City's fire department been so bad if other departments in the country have not reflected this kind of Well, risk? the truth is that most departments in, in, around the country have changed because of lawsuits. For some reason, uh, and I guess we know the reason, really, and, and Paul could probably talk about it better than I. But it's a terrific job being a firefighter. If you ask uh, most any firefighter what they think of the job, they'll tell you it's absolutely wonderful. It's, uh, it's exciting. Uh, there are short uh, days. They work eight days a month. Uh, the pay is good. Uh, they're well respected. It's, a, in that sense, a very good job. So the whites who have basically controlled the jobs and the departments over many, many years uh, have seen to it that their kids and their family members and their relatives uh, go into those jobs after they're in them. Uh, and so it's become an enclave. It's become a, a protected area uh, of, of white privilege, in a sense. And so the courts had to intervene, really, to see that uh, steps were taken that others could join. Paul Washington, uh, can you talk about the original Equal Employment Opportunity Commission complaint? Give us the examples of discrimination. Well, in 2002, we first filed that, that complaint. Um, and it alleged that, uh, you know, that there was discrimination throughout the department, everything from how they recruit. When the, the, the test for the job comes out about once every four years, and the fire department would put forth um, a pitiful effort to recruit blacks into the job. That was one of our complaints. Another complaint was the test that they were given was no indication of how good a firefighter you would, you would become. 
but it managed to put blacks down at the bottom of the list. Blacks would always score um, not as well as whites on the test. And, uh, and that would be fine if, if, if the guy who got 100 was going to be better than the person who got a 90 or an 85. But that wasn't the case. Everybody knew that wasn't the case. Um, so there were things like that. Um, uh, there was a five points. There's a five points residency that's given to um, uh, to anyone who's a New York City resident. Uh, there was vast, a uh, vast amount of cheating going on. People from Long Island and upstate were still getting those five points, which was critical to getting a job. So those were some of the complaints that we brought in 2002. And now here we are, what, uh, almost 15 years later, 13 years later, four, uh, my math is kind of <laughs> 12 years later, and, uh, and we're now just finally settling this lawsuit. And, Paul, what, was, what were some of the questions in the entrance exam, exams that you feel didn't uh, necessarily address how good a firefighter would be, but somehow uh, managed to uh, uh, exclude mm -hmm. the majority of black or Latino applicants? Well, if you looked at the test, you couldn't really find. There was no smoke and gun. There was no question that you could say, oh, this, this question would uh, uh, be harder for a black applicant to answer than a white applicant. But it's just like the SAT uh, test, for example. Um, you know, blacks uh, just don't do as well on the test. And um, uh, if, it's, if it's job related, that's fine. But we knew, and the city knew all along, that they could not prove that that test was job related. Paul, can you talk about how you ended up in the New York Fire Department? Yeah, easy. Uh, my father was a firefighter. My older brother was a firefighter. I had two cousins who were firefighters. As Richard said, it's a father-son type of job. Most people don't realize how good the job is unless they have some type of close connection like that, which I had, which is a tremendous advantage in getting onto the job. Uh, to have a close relative, is uh, it puts you leaps and bounds ahead of others for, for many different reasons. Um, uh, the motivation, you, you obviously have more motivation. You know the proper steps to take to become a firefighter. If you've had some type of background issue, um, maybe you had a DUI or maybe you had some type of uh, medical problem, a lot of times, you know, your father would be able to smooth those things over. And that was all proven in the, 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 the case that we brought. So your father must have been one of the only African Americans in the New York Fire My Department. My father was either the first or the second black firefighter in Staten Island. Uh, he joined the fire department in 1956 when there was blatant discrimination. Uh, Commissioner Cassano has stated over the course of his 40 years in the fire department, he never saw discrimination. He said that under oath. He never saw the, my father, myself, we've seen enough discrimination for him and everybody else. There's been plenty of discrimination in the fire department. And uh, my father and people of his era had it much harder than, 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 uh, than I ever did. And Richard Levy, could you talk about what you think some of the changes are within the Fire Department of New York that are likely to be initi initiated as a consequence of this settlement? Yeah, I think there are going to be significant changes, uh, uh, partly because of the case and partly because I think there's a new attitude at City Hall. Um, under the new settlement, the settlement that was reached uh, last week, uh, we're going to have a, a chief diversity officer in the department who is going to be responsible solely for dealing with uh, racial problems in the department, recruiting in the department, and so on. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of tension around race in the fire department. Uh, there was a, a public hearing, uh, uh, a fair hearing, they call it, in court uh, a year or so ago, and hundreds of whites signed up to complain about the case and to complain about changing the test, knowing nothing about what the changes would be and that the test was going to be more job-related than it ever had been, but they were just screaming about, uh, about any change. So I think we're going to see real changes from that. We now have a recruiting quota, which we never had before. Uh, so I think there's going to be a real requirement that the department step up its game on, on bringing uh, more minorities into the department. How much did uh, you win exactly? How much was the settlement? The monetary part of the settlement uh, it will be in excess of $98 million. $98 million is the amount uh, that represents lost back pay and lost benefits. How much will this mean for individual firefighters? Well, it could range up to hundreds of thousands of dollars to a firefighter uh, who could have been hired on this job but for the discrimination that took place in various steps of the hiring process. And can you talk about the difference between Mayor Bloomberg and Mayor de Blasio in dealing with the settlement, because it spanned both uh, tenures? Well, uh, it's a night and day difference. Um, I have to say that this case, uh, as Paul suggested, should have been settled ages ago. Uh, 
It was an obvious situation. The test was clearly bad. They had never tried to clean it up or tried to look at its validity, what we call validity uh, in, legal, in the legal uh, parlance. Um, and there had been findings. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, Federal Commission, had made a finding. The Equal Employment Practices Commission, an agency of New York City, back in 2000, had said, there's a problem with these tests. We think they're no good. Uh, Commissioner Scapetta, why don't you check out these tests? And the commissioner said, no, I don't think we need to do that. And so they went to the mayor, something they'd only done twice in the history of the Equal Employment Practices Commission, and they said, mayor, tell the commissioner he really has to check out these tests. And the mayor said, I, I don't think we need to do that. So that was the Bloomberg administration. The de Blasio administration, when we came in and we said, look, we should, we should wrap this up, it's creating more tension in the department, it shouldn't go on, uh, it's obvious that changes have to be made, they said, yeah, it looks like changes really have to be made. We sat down, we created a settlement uh, very quickly uh, with the new Corp counsel, Zach Carter, who understood the issue and approached it from the standpoint of, well, let's talk about what we can do to improve. Night and day situation. And my view is that the $98 million bill should be sent directly to Mayor Bloomberg personally, because he could have settled this case several years ago for $10 million. And there was a back pay meter that was running during all that time, so all these people were building up back pay that finally wound up at $98 million, because he, I think very arrogantly, would not allow a settlement to happen in this case. Hmm. And Paul Washington, are you worried at all about um, backlash against present uh, uh, black firefighters in the department who might be upset at this ruling? I mean, sorry, from the rank and file who may be upset at the ruling? Uh, no, not really. Um, uh, but honestly, uh, the issues, the racial issues that uh, occur in firehouses will never really be adequately addressed until there are enough black firefighters, women firefighters, Hispanic firefighters in those firehouses. I mean, it's one thing when you're a black firefighter and you're the only black firefighter working in that house on a particular tour. You know, it might just be you and 12 uh, white firefighters. That's, that's one atmosphere. But when there's three or four black firefighters or two or three black firefighters, two or three Hispanic firefighters, a woman firefighter um, uh, in that group, it's a whole different dynamic. It's a much more comfortable atmosphere for those uh, uh, women and, and firefighters of color. Black or Latino firefighters who are in the department get any of the settlement money? Uh, some who came into the department later than they should have will be eligible for will some you? of that. Will you? No, no, no. This affected firefighters who took the test in 1999 or 2002. And so why did you fight so hard for this? Well, you know, I, I just uh, I just saw that it, it was a great job, and it was a job that needs to be open to all New Yorkers. You know, everyone needs to share in this job, uh, black, uh, Hispanic, Asian, and, uh, and, uh, and I knew that there was no reason that blacks were being excluded, no good reason that blacks were being excluded. So, um, you know, it was a fight that, uh, that I was glad to take on. Well, to, congratulations to both of you and to the Vulcan Society. Um, I want to thank you both for being with us. Paul Washington uh, is past president of the Vulcan Society of Black Firefighters, one of the Fire Department of New York employees who raised the original Equal Employment Opportunity Commission complaint about the department's racial makeup. And thanks to Richard Levy, lawyer for the black firefighters who sued New York City over the discriminatory hiring. Again, New York City's fire department largest in the country, second largest in the world. When we come back, sailors and Marines are suing the nuclear power company in Japan for radiation exposure they suffered coming to the aid of the Japanese after the Fukushima meltdowns. Stay with us.